All right, what I got here today, it's a, this is an M1 carbine, 30 caliber M1 carbine. Um, this is one of my favorite guns. Uh, my dad had a reproduction model when I was growing up and I just, it just fascinated me more than any other gun when I was a kid and I always wanted one. I wanted the, you know, the US model, uh, the army, the official model and I finally got one a couple years ago. And I'm going to do a little video here, and then we're going to talk about doing some reloading for the 30 carbine. But basically, um, after World War I, they did some studies, different things, and they looked at pistols uh, and the revolver that they used at the time, still a model 1917 revolver, as primarily being defensive weapons. And they wanted something that was a little, that could reach out a little bit farther, hopefully to at least 300 yards, and it would increase the soldiers you know offensive effectiveness uh you know as far as close range or personal defense type type weapon uh and then uh, so this is what they came up with basically on accordingly on october 1st 1940 the ordnance department published a circular which was in effect an appeal to known gun manufacturers and inventors to submit a gun with the following general characteristics Weight not to exceed five pounds. Range effective up to 300 yards. Semi-automatic fire essential. Full automatic desirable. To be carried by sling or some comparable device. And chambered for the cartridge of 30 caliber of the Winchester self-loading type. With case similar to that of the commercial Winchester self-loading cartridge caliber 32. And the deadline was uh, May 1941. So the particular model that I have here, this is actually uh, one made by National uh, Postal Meter. And I mean, I got this, you know, obviously used. I'm not sure. I think it may be, a, you know, a CMP former gun. I'm not really 100% sure on that. But it definitely looks like it saw some, uh, some use in some combat at some point. But as you can tell, the, you know, the stock here is a little bit lighter colored. And this is probably what the original... National Postal Meter. They were known for having uh, walnut, uh, you know, darker walnut stocks. So this is the National Postal Meter uh, gun here. And uh, basically, after a week after the America entered World War II, National Postal Meter and the Todd Corporation partnered to start Rochester Defense. But then, basically, the Rochester Defense Company was dissolved. And at the time of their first contract, they just decided to go ahead and do, they merged all the assets in the National Postal Meter. And they had no tools, no employees, and no location for building carbines. Their first test fire range was built by raising the floor of the manufacturing plant three feet above the building's concrete floor and literally shooting underneath the production line. There was roughly about 413,000 of the National Postal Meter made and they didn't make their barrels they didn't make any barrels so this this particular gun and I don't know if you can see it or not but on the barrel it's marked uh, Marlin on the barrel so Marlin made the barrel you know of course they made the receiver the other parts of the gun um, and you know these these guns I mean it, people I think either love them or hate them uh, like I said I, I've just loved them for many years and I always wanted one uh, you know some people will say that they're not um, you know power they're not very powerful or they're, they're not very accurate or different things like this um, you know I don't know this is just a great piece of American history and I mean this is if I have any gun that's a safe queen this is probably the only gun that's really a safe queen for me I mean I very rarely have ever shot this gun just a few times and I decided to go ahead and start doing some reloading for it and uh, you know get it out and shoot it to shoot it a little bit so uh, basically what I did is I looked at a couple of different manuals. Um, well, first of all, you know, I, I looked at the manuals, but then I, I found some really good diet, just a cheap, I mean, these are actually uh, RCBS, but it's an older set. A guy had several sets he was getting rid of on eBay, and I, I just bought every one of them. And uh, this was in there, so that's the dies I'm going to use. Um, but you know, I got I got the books out. I got the Hornady book out. You know, and I was reading here, and I was looking, and it's kind of interesting because these 90 XTPs, I loaded those up for my Tokarev 7.6225 Tokarev. It's actually got a loading in here for the same bullet. 
Then it's got uh, the short jacket, which a lot of people I've, I've read have pretty good luck with those. And then of course the only really other bullets that you would use, this is what it was uh, developed for here, the 110 grain full metal jacket. Then they've also got the lead uh, round nose. But uh, so it gives some good load information in there and I was reading the description here and it was really, uh, I mean honestly it's kind of kind of pitiful what they've got in here. They don't really give you a whole lot of good information and I mean basically in here it says you know that the gun wasn't it's not any good it talks about you know there's no the accuracy is poor and the the knockdown power you know it says uh, it's not highly accurate or a deadly round primarily used as a defensive weapon and they didn't really give me a lot of good uh, reloading uh, you know tips except for just the you know the load data uh, so then I've, I've got several reloading manuals like most people do I got the new Lyman one too and I was just looking in it and seeing what it said and it had a little bit more a uh, little bit more detailed thing you know when it talks down here about uh, you know the different loads they developed you know and it says it's cartridge straight walled it head spaces on the case mouth case length should be uniform should not be trimmed below trim to trim to length and it talks about some powders that are good to use in it so it's a little bit more information but really the best uh, as far as reloading information is out of the the sierra manual that i have here um, and it really gives a good little synopsis here as far as the gun used in world war ii um, it talks about how the carters came to be based on 32 winchester it talks about the initial load um, you know, and it says like most straight walled rimless cases, the 30 carbine head spaces on the case mouth. Therefore, we recommend applying only a modest taper crimp after bullet seating. As always, we strongly recommend the crimp as a separate option after the bullet has been seated. And it talks about due to limited capacity, we found at H110 and 296 to be better choices for velocity. So, out of all three of the manuals, to me, this one has better as far as just a little bit of historical information development and then it talks about actual reloading like how to actually reload you know the the cartridge properly um, which is which is very good so I don't know as some people might find that interesting but I usually consult several different um, you know resources before I just you know jump in and start uh, reloading things so what I've got, I've got the 90 grain XTP bullets, and then I've got the um, the 100 grain, the short jacket bullets, and then I've also got some 110 grain, uh, just the round nose, uh, full metal jacket bullets. So I've, I've got a, you know, a, a pretty much the the assortment of what they list in there, or what most uh, you know manuals list, and so I'm gonna go ahead and get started uh, reloading for this. Uh, this gun and this is really uh, like I said this is a I just you know of all of all my guns I've just I've always had a love affair I guess with the M1 carbine I just think it's such a neat gun it, it is just it's a very handy gun it's very short it's very easy to you know uh, just point aim and shoot I mean it's basically I guess most people will consider it a personal uh, defense weapon but I mean it's uh, still uh, you know can be ranged out to 200 300 yards I guess if you know if you had to and this particular model has got the more uh, you know the, the the later or well the some of the sites were just like a flip up but this is actually a, a dial um, site a peep site that it's got on it um, but uh, I just um, I don't know like I said that's my safe queen so I'm gonna get her out do some shooting with her and uh, take you along for the journey okay um well here i got my my lee uh, classic turret press then i've got the rcbs dies set up and uh you know like i said i got these uh, bought a whole bunch of whole set of different dies um off of ebay so um actually i got a pretty good deal on these um these dies right here i think i end up when it was all said and done including all the shipping and everything is about 18 20 bucks for those and then i went ahead and bought the uh, lee factory clamp die separately so that was about another uh, 12 dollars there 
so it took me is thirty two dollars I got this set of dies which is, is pretty good um, I thought it wouldn't wasn't too bad and really I don't even know if I needed the taper crimp I just went ahead and got it anyway I've just been putting a just a small taper crimp on there but for these um, you do need to for this set of dies and I think they do make a carbide Lee does a uh, you know sizing die for these but um, I even looked on the website and a lot of different things that said even for the carbide die you had to lube the cases so anyways this is just a steel sizing die so you know you do want to lube the cases and I've just got some lanolin spray lube I've lubed these with um, I've been working with uh, Winchester 296 uh, powder and uh, I've ran into a few little few little problems here and there along the way and let me see okay sorry so they're sized go ahead and seat the primer see what that looks like looks fine go ahead and do the flare on the case and then uh, I've still been uh, using you know, I don't have a powder through die like this one, which I wish I did, but I'm still making good use of my treetop flyer stand there. I mean, it just, even if you don't use a powder through die, the stand, it just, it keeps your powder, you know, your powder measure kind of, a, you know, in, within very good use, use uh, you know, area, and it's just not in the way either, so it still works, works really good with that and um, let's see what that shows 16.4 grains that's what I've been going with on the Winchester 296 and then these are the Hornady short jacket bullets here and uh, that's what I've started uh, loading it's not that easy to do this with your camera there in the way but go ahead and set that on there and then this uh, bullet seating die, I've kind of, uh, I don't know, I might have to look at a different one eventually, but as you can see on this, on this soft lead right here, it actually makes a, uh, makes like a little indention in it. And I've shot some and uh, loaded just a few up the other day and they shot fine. And even on this, uh, you can see on this uh, full metal jacket here, it still made a little indention on that which those are just coated lead anyway but it didn't seem like it affected it uh, shooting but one thing that's kind of strange about this RCBS die right here is it's got it's got a built-in roll crimp on it and I didn't know that whenever I first started and as you can see uh, this this one I just did by you know because I didn't know when I was getting it set up that was like the first one I did right there and then this one I did by accident when I didn't you know have it set quite right again so I'm about to pull those and uh, redo them because like I said it, it had spaces you know on the case mouth so if that roll crimp if the case mouse rolled in I mean it's not going to head space right you're going to have some major problems um, probably if nothing else it's, it's going to be jammed in there or, or worse so anyways you don't want to I don't know why they put the roll crimp on this but I guess that's just how they made this particular die set so just watch out for that when you do that now I've just been putting a light uh, you know like uh, the Sierra book said just a light uh, taper crimp on there nothing nothing major just a light taper crimp so uh, there's one loaded up and then I got uh, like I said some of these I've already loaded some of these up that's a 90 grain XTP Hornady XTP and I'm just using Winchester 296 for all these uh, that one I've got 15.8 grains of 296 and then these actually call for 16.4 in the manual so that's what I was doing on those so uh, these you know they the the seating die didn't I couldn't tell any any marks or anything on these of course they're they're more flat right there so Anyways, uh, the seating die I might need to, you know, and I thought about just getting a, thir or a, a 300 blackout, using my 300 blackout bullet seating die, and I, I, you know, I might do that next time. 
Um, but I, you know, although I don't like the way that looks, I don't think it'll really, probably won't really affect it, at least out to the distances I'm, I'm shooting. But, you know, there's a loaded one. So here's the three bullets I have. I've got the 90 grain XTP. I've got the uh, 100 grain short jacket, which it's a lead, and it's just got the little short jacket down there at the bottom. And then the uh, full metal jacket there, those are uh, Rainier lead safe 30 carbine. It's 110 grain plated uh, round nose. And um, these, I think it only calls up to, uh, I think it's 1900 feet per second. I don't have the load data handy. I got that written down somewhere else on those. But uh, these are going to be over, over 2000 feet per second. These two both should be. So uh, anyways. I'll just do one more here for the heck of it. And I do, you, like I said, you do have to lube these cases up and that small rifle primers, you know, S and B primers. I'm just using the small rifle ones. And uh, put a little flare on it. And this uh, Frankfurt Arsenal powder measure it's does a pretty good job I usually still weigh all the charges and you know they, they there it is again 16.4 so that's that's what I want go ahead and seat the bullet down in there a little bit so you have to kind of once when you feel like I said on this die I don't want to do the roll cramp so when I feel a little bit of pressure a little bit of extra pressure I'll stop pull it out and so as you can see it just it got rid of the it seated down just past the uh, or well or actually just to just to the the jacket on these and then we'll just put the light light cramp on there light taper cramp nothing major that's what it calls for so I'm going to finish loading these up and then uh, we'll get to do some shooting. Okay, well I'm done loading and this is what I've got. I loaded some of these, the 30 caliber 90 grain XTP 309 diameter. These are the Tokarev bullets. Uh, the Hornady manual has a loading for those so might as well load some of those up. Here's the, these are 308 diameter, they're 100 grain, the uh, short jacket bullets that I did in the video just a minute ago. And then uh, I got some of these uh, repacked uh, from Midway, but they're 30 carbine, 110 grain plated uh, round nose bullets. And that's actually what's recommended to shoot in the 30 carbine, the you know the full metal jacket uh, loaded. I think they loaded about 1,950 feet per second. That was the standard issue uh, military load. And all these bullets are very inexpensive uh, as far as that goes. These, I don't remember exactly what I paid for them. I'm thinking it was maybe around $12. I'm not 100% sure. These were $15. These uh, I got on sale. They were also $15 on sale. I think they're regularly about $20. I'm not sure. But I got all of them from Midway. They're all very inexpensive, uh, you know, bullets, uh, you know, to load and to shoot. And um, one interesting thing, when I was looking at these, uh, you know, a lot of people compare this, you know, uh, fairly or unfairly, you know, to the 357. Well, there's a there's a 357 there, and it's got 158 grain uh, Hornady loaded in it. And as you can see, and then here's some here's some brass. When you look in the manual, the uh, you know the brass the maximum brass uh, case length is the same for both guns it's 1.290 you know the basically the the cases are the exact same length um, the course the difference is the you know this is a bigger diameter you know I mean they can the 30 carbine can fit down in a you know fit down in a 357 case but um, I don't know in case anybody wasn't a wear that I thought I'd just throw that out there it's kind of interesting but um, you know these uh, these bullets um, we're gonna see how these shoot hopefully they they shoot well hopefully I can get some decent decent groups and decent velocity out of them so just uh, hold on I'm gonna wrap this video up 
and then the next video that I do uh, hopefully a couple of days from now will be the shooting of these and then I'll have some accuracy hopefully some chronograph data for you thanks for watching